Okay. So for, for our understanding sake, let's divide this whole DNA replication process in three different sections. One is the DNA replication initiation, then the elongation, then the termination or the end phase. Though there are no uh, such obligations to do that, but still let's do it for our own convenience. And let's begin with the first thing that is the DNA replication initiation. And remind you that DNA replication initiation is the most important event in the DNA replication. Because the thing is, the cell decides a lot whether to in, in enter into the DNA replication or not. And that is the initiation phase that determines this whole process. So if a cell is now going through the cell division process, and it, it, it is inside this first stage or, uh, or the cell uh, replication, DNA replication initiation. In that case, there is no way that they will go back uh, to stop that process. So that is why it is a rate determining process of this rate determining stage of this whole process. So let's talk about it a little bit here. So at the very beginning uh, of this uh, DNA replication process, I've, we have talked about uh, the different uh, sequential stages of DNA replication process previously. And we know that there are certain problems out there uh, which are to be encountered uh, by us uh, during the different DNA replication stages. For example, uh, as the DNA polymer is in the enzyme for the DNA replication, there are certain problems. First problem is that the DNA is double helix structure, so to access the bases, we must open those DNA strands. So that is the pro problem number one. The problem number two it was that uh, in that case, uh, we the, for, for the polymerization process to start, DNA polymerase definitely require a free 3' hydroxyl, right? So for that, we need another process or something like that. And also, as both of these strands are working as 5' to 3' uh, and 3' to 5', prime, both of the parent strands are working as uh, templates. In that case, they also require uh, some other strategy to synthesize the newly stranded DNA because the newly stranded DNA synthesis can only occur from 5' prime to 3', prime, right? So these are the problems that are encountered. So during the initiation, all this we need to take care of certain of some part of these problems. So let's talk about mm, these first stages. And the first stage is to separate the both the strands of the DNA because that is very very important to separate out those DNA strands from each other prior to the synthesis of new strands uh, to take them as a template. Now for that what we have we have this this. Uh, this enzyme, green colored enzyme here, hexameric enzyme. This enzyme is termed as helicase, right? So helicase is the enzyme which will help this DNA to be unwrapped from each other. So the helicase, what will do? The helicase will load one of this DNA strand and a helicase will drag the energy from ATP hydrolysis as you can see. It is attached to the one of the DNA strands, one of the parent DNA strands and it is a hexameric protein and it has a rotating shaft like structure. So this helicase st start rotating and as it is rotating what it does, it is unwrapping the DNA strands from each other right and during this rotating process they require energy and the energy is taken from the ATP hydrolysis so it is taking the energy from ATP hydrolysis and it is rotating and as it is rotating it is kind of unwrapping those two DNA strands from each other and making room for adding new nucleotide sequences because as it is uh, rotating and 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 denaturing the DNA in that case the new bases that are coming out from both of these parent strands are now free so the bases that are coming out now free uh, to interact with the new uh, newly nucleotide sequences as a template there okay so the first stage of DNA replication initiation is passed and that is the separation of the DNA strands from each other, the parental strands from each other. And that separation is brought about by this enzyme, hexameric enzyme, which is called as helicase, remember. And this helicase have different names in different system. For example, in E. coli, it is called as a DNA B, right? So different names can be there, but that is helicase, right? So it can actually separate helix from each other. Now the thing is, the second stage is also vital and it is also encountering to solve another problem. And the second problem was, remember, that the priming, because the DNA polymerase cannot initiate adding nucleotide sequences from scratch. It requires a free 3' hydroxyl group present there to elongate that. So for that reason, 
in this case we require another machinery to add some 3 prime hydroxyl units there or, or nucleotide units at first for this process to work properly on the other hand in DNA transcription we have in, in transcription we have seen that RNA polymerase can uh, start doing all this polymerization from the scratch so in this case we use that kind of RNA polymerase type of enzyme which can actually add certain nucleotide sequences at the very beginning and obviously if that's RNA polymerase enzyme they are going to add some some of the RNA sequences there so anyway so so at the very beginning that is the process that process is called as the priming process because the free stretch of nucleotide sequences that will be added uh, in that process are called the primers and for this priming they, they need to prepare the DNA and how so at the very beginning remember helicase is unwrapping the DNA here uh, and uh, by the hydrolysis of uh, ATP getting this energy from and then then after this they have two different separate DNA strands remember so separate DNA strands it's kind of looking like a fork isn't it so it's a kind of having a, a helix structure downstream here and we have a two different separate uh, strands there so this is looking like a, a kind of fork so this uh, structure here in the DNA at the very beginning and uh, during the whole process of DNA replication is known as the DNA replication fork okay so in this once it is produced they have this SSB or single stranded binding proteins to come over why because remember these are the DNA single strands and they have complementarity with each other so now we take energy uh, and the help of helicase to separate them out from each other but if we leave them as it is due to this complementarity nature of their basis they can repair with themselves and that's definitely not wanted because again if they're repaired we need again some energy to to uh, denature them again so for that reason uh, to prevent them from adding with each other or prevent them from pairing with each other we require some other protein called single strand binding proteins so these are single stranded DNA binding proteins which will come so approximately say 60 per fork so they will come and adhere to both the strands of the DNA so that the DNA strands are not able to attach with each other right so once that is achieved and remember this whole process is going on along with uh, the process of DNA helicase because the DNA helicase is doing its job it is it is unwrapping the DNA and during that time they are also adding all those SSB proteins one after another continuously and once that process is, is done then the priming will occur and then the primer will be added and that primer will be added by the enzyme called DNA primase remember so as you can see here this is uh, the structure this is the primer how the primer is added here as you can see this yellow colored section is the primer because you know all this process is going on continuously so helicase is separating or unwinding the DNA and during that time SSB proteins are bound with both the single stranded DNA to prevent them from rejoining with themselves and then what happens this this uh, helicase comes in uh, this this primase or DNA primase enzyme comes in it will sit here and start adding all those uh, ribonucleotide sequence there because uh, this is a kind of RNA polymerase type of enzyme it start adding those sequence and that cause the primer so once they start adding the primer to one of the DNA strands those SSB proteins are now released because they don't require they don't be required right now so they will be released outside and they get this structure here so primer is now added remember the primer will be added from 5 prime to 3 prime direction which is also the directionality of this whole process of DNA replication right so primer is added so once the primer will be added uh, this polymerase will get the 3 prime hydroxyl and they can start adding more of a nucleotide sequences there right so the DNA primer addition is very very important because uh, the DNA polymerase enzyme that we know of for example let's say this is the DNA polymerase enzyme that we know of they cannot initiate adding nucleotide sequences they can only add nucleotide sequences if they got a 3 prime hydroxyl group which is free to react and for that to happen they require the free 3 prime hydroxyl and and for that reason we require an enzyme specialized enzyme here called primase 
and this is the enzyme primase here this is the primase here as you can see so this primase enzyme actually start adding nucleotide sequences one after another and the nucleotide sequence they add remember this nucleotide sequence that they have added here this nucleotide sequence this nucleotide sequence are of ribonucleotide so rntps they are not dntps there are rntps that are being added here right so once they add these rntps one after another and they produce this free 3 prime hydroxyl group as a result the dna polymerase can now easily this dna polymerase can easily now start adding the deoxyribonucleotide sequences so remember this first stage of nucleotide sequences that are here they are obviously of RNA type but after that all the sequences are DNA type right okay so we have seen the sequential events in the DNA replication initiation and one of the first stages was to separate the DNA strands from each other DNA helicase achieved that task the second one is to add the uh, single stranded binding protein that is also being added to prevent those DNA strands to be reannealed and then the addition of RNA primers uh, so that the DNA polymerase can start adding nucleotide sequence so those things we have observed now we'll be talking about the major event for the DNA re replication initiation and that is the addition or involvement of DNA polymerase and when I say DNA polymerase I mean DNA polymerase 3 here because DNA polymerase 3 is the most important enzyme of all this DNA replication process so what happens here this DNA polymerase 3 is a very much complicated enzyme having two different uh, different complete of subdomains and using those domains they actually help in uh, replicating the DNA strands both of the parental DNA strands same time together because you know uh, the DNA replication process is semi conservative in nature so definitely it should uh, use both of its parental strand as template to produce the DNA right and that can be achieved by two different unit containing uh, DNA polymerase and that's why we, we have a complete two different set uh, for two different parental strands so if you see here at the very beginning so let us zoom into this part a little bit uh, the, this is uh, the structure of the DNA polymerase 3 and if you look at the DNA polymerase 3 hollow enzyme there are two different ways of looking at it one is the DNA polymerase 3 core enzyme and then uh, the DNA polymerase 3 hollow enzyme you mean the hollow enzyme means the complete set of uh, subunits of an enzyme but core enzyme is a simple subunit of that and you know so let's zoom into here a little bit so this as you can see here this thing is nothing but uh, the structure of the core enzyme of DNA polymerase 3 so this is the core enzyme consisting of different uh, domains like like gamma psi uh, delta so different kinds of domains are there and this is called as the clamp loader protein now you know clamp loader protein is very much important for loading what is called a DNA clamp Remember, the DNA polymerase is a structure which should hold on to both of the DNA strand with something. Otherwise, it will fall and DNA replication will not be possible. So, the polymer should have a particular structure which can hold on to the DNA template strands. And that is the structure of clamp. So, if I zoom out a little bit here, as you can see here, this is the structure of the clamp that we are talking about. This is the clamp protein which will hold on to the DNA strand so though the picture is telling us it is holding hold on to the double stranded DNA but actually this is wrong this is not true actually this clamp loader will load on to a single stranded DNA so if you imagine a single stranded DNA this clamp loader protein will interact with that single stranded DNA there like that so let's imagine this is a beta this is a beta that's called the, the beta clamp protein okay and and for loading this clamp to the DNA is very very important because so that this polymerase can continue replicating the DNA but loading of this protein requires certain other machinery factors like this clamp loader protein as it is a clamp loader it will load this beta clamp onto the single stranded template of the DNA right and during this loading of beta clamp uh, onto the single stranded DNA it requires a hydrolysis of ATP which requires the energy and gets the energy from the hydrolysis of the ATP okay 
So let's assume that uh, at the very beginning, so this is a simple stage of clamp loader and beta clamp to load this onto the DNA strand. But this is not uh, the core enzyme, uh, this is the core enzyme. But now the major unit for, uh, for this DNA polymerase 3 need to be joined. And that major, major unit here is this one, as you can see here. This is, the, this is the major unit, the alpha, uh, the sigma, the alpha, theta and epsilon. So the alpha, theta and epsilon together is called as another core enzyme. So the core enzyme joins in. So this is the core enzyme and the core enzyme joins in with the clamp loader and clamp which is the accessory protein or the accessory unit. This is the accessory unit, right, accessory unit here. And this is the core unit. So core unit now joins with the accessory unit. Because remember, clamp loader need to function properly. And the function of clamp loader and clamp protein is nothing but uh, to load itself, to load this core enzyme and re to make this core enzyme remain attached with the template strand. Right? So the core enzyme comes in. And now as this structure forms, more of the structure will be added one after another here. So as you can see here, more of the structures are added here and two of the same kind of units are now added. Both these domains are now added. So as you can see, this is an identical structure. If I simply break it down, you can see an identical structure there. This is the identical structure in both the side. This side as well as this side, the identical structure is observed, right? And they have only one clamp loader but two different beta clamps. Now you can see the symmetry here because these two beta clamps are for two different strands. One from the lagging strand, remember, another from for the leading strand. Right? Two beta clamps are for two different separate strands and all these core enzymes are required and these core enzymes are joined together by this subunit called tau. So tau subunit helps those two different domains of this protein to be joined with themselves to be attached with themselves, right? So they have identical subunits there, right? So that is the actual structure of 3, I mean polymerase 3. This is the polymerase 3 which is the vital most enzyme for all this process. So in the future uh, sections of this video, we'll be talking about how this polymerase 3 loads itself and then the next sequential images of the initiation there.